You've probably heard the term bird brain. Well, as it turns out, bird brains and human brains have a lot in common when it comes to vocal learning. The ability to speak is often taken for granted, yet humans suffer from a variety of vocal disabilities, which so far scientists know very little about. In order to better understand vocal learning and its associated difficulties, scientists led by Dr. Wes Warren at Washington University's Genome Center recently decoded the genome of an Australian songbird called the zebra finch. Much like humans, these birds are vocal learners. The Washington University School of Medicine Genome Center is interested in genomes that have fascinating stories to tell. The zebra finch genome is one of those stories. It has a complex neurological story. It is a great model for vocal learning, and our hope is to use that information in the future to better understand human diseases such as Parkinson's, autism, stuttering, starting with a bird model such as the zebra finch. Songbirds are really cool for a lot of reasons uh, because of the way that they um, learn to sing and they communicate with each other and there's differences between the males and the females and so there's a lot of biology going on in there. Right? Scientists are beginning to uncover a correlation between our genes and DNA and how we as humans express ourselves. There's a lot of evidence from a lot of different experiments that, um, that genes are actively involved in things like learning and, and memory. And when I say genes, I'm referring to the, the information, right, that is in our DNA, um, and uh, every cell in our body has that information, including our brain cells. So whenever our brain cells form new memories, the evidence is that they're actually having to go to the genomes and say, to make this memory happen, I've got to turn this gene on or turn it off. When we say turn it on and turn it off, it's basically, it's a chemical process. We think that these differences in gene expression are, are really at the root of a lot of our behavior too and our abilities to adapt to experience, learn new experiences, change our behavior in healthy or not so healthy ways. Um, but we need animal models to study that. And if you think about it, uh, as I'm speaking now and you're hearing my words and interpreting them, the number of genes going up and down in your brain is, is huge complexity. So each time a gene is increased in dosage in your brain, another gene may be decreasing in dosage. And there's hundreds of these events going in real time as you're listening to my words. And trying to break that down is a very sophisticated process or a very difficult and challenging process. And our goal is to try to use the zebra finch genome to start to understand that. What once seemed like science fiction is standard practice today. Genome sequencing, or creating a map of this songbird's entire complement of genetic material, allows these scientists to understand how humans learn language and provides insight into the pathology of common speech disorders. From 1985 to, let's say, 2000, the world was sort of transformed with the uh, power of genome sequencing. You know, it was really driven by the Human Genome Project, and uh, it, it caught everybody, I think, almost by by surprise at how quickly the field moved forward. And in what, uh, when I was starting, I, I as a you know, 1985, I would not have imagined would have ever been possible, you know, to actually get the whole genome sequence of a songbird. Um, people didn't think that was going to be possible for a human. And by sequencing the genome or the the blueprint of life for each one of these species we can investigate why there's such great differences. While most animals simply vocalize sounds, the zebra finch song is learned and passed down from father to offspring and then used throughout life. The zebra finch, as well as other songbirds, um, learns to sing and learns to communicate vocally. This ability to uh, conduct vocal communication like we're doing right now is actually relatively rare in, in the animal kingdom. The Genome Project allowed us to take these genes, classify those genes, understand uh, the genes in terms of their relationship to other species, and by doing that it allows us to get a greater amount of detail associated with those pathways that are, that are part of vocal learning. So any time a zebra finch uh, hears a song from its parent, it's processing that sound and it's creating what we call a footprint of memory associated with that song. And that footprint basically is comprised of a whole bunch of genes so that the next time it hears that song, it's familiar with the song 
and more importantly, when it wants to reproduce this song later in life, it can do so. What previously took months to accomplish can now be completed in a matter of days thanks to advances in technology. When we say we sequence a genome, what we do is obtain a sample, usually blood or some other tissue source, from that species that we're interested in sequencing, and we extract the DNA from that source. And then we take that DNA and we break it up into many little pieces, and then we use these various sequencing uh, technologies to read the code for each one of those little pieces. Every dot represents a single gene, and the color of that dot indicates how strongly that gene is turned on or off. So when we're looking at the screen, we're looking at the building blocks of life. And as we decode each one of these pieces, we get a complete picture of the code for that particular piece. If we now have a genome template, we can go in and look at all of those genes in great detail. We can look at the structure of those genes. We can look at all the pieces that are in front of them or behind them that regulate those genes. And by doing that, it allows us to understand how this set of genes, is a few hundred of these, uh, how they're regulated in the brain, that we can actually then transfer that knowledge to various traits in humans where you have disruptions in vocal learning capabilities. Scientists don't have a complete picture yet, but hope is on the horizon. One possibility is that you actually go in and you substitute new genetic information for, for old. That uh, is being tried with a lot of human diseases. The other strategy is that if you understand the pathway, you may be able to develop a drug, for example, by ordinary conventional means that would activate that pathway uh, by some novel mechanism. And the third possibility actually would be purely behavioral. The idea that, that if we understand more how we as living sentient beings interact with each other and in the world and how that engages our basic core biology, that the, we, we may also learn, learn, learn things that way. What we hope for this research in the zebra finch species is that by understanding the molecular pathways associated with vocal learning, the ability to hear sound and interpret it as well as reproduce sound uh, is a starting point and then that really is a segue for better understanding what's going on in the human population. Understanding how organisms adapt and how they are related to each other and to humans is an important part of this research and this little songbird is helping by giving scientists something to tweet about. While further research is needed, Dr. Warren and his colleagues hope that this map of the finch's DNA will soon provide insights to those struggling with vocal issues.